There's a sense of quiet about. There's no planes going overhead. There's a fear in the air where people are afraid of catching the virus. They're afraid of how they're going to survive now. Um, I, I guess it's, it's basically like the collapse of all human systems. We are in lockdown and I'm not supposed to leave my house for the foreseeable future. I thought I'd have fallen out with someone by now. <laughs> we have to remind ourselves that there's actually like a global pandemic happening and people aren't following instructions. Believe me, I'm so stressed. Each time somebody get in my car, I was thinking like, yeah, maybe this person have it. Since last week, I, I didn't even work one day because people might have the virus. Other human beings, like, you need to think about others as well. I've never thought of myself as an older person. <laughs> I'm probably a lot more vulnerable than a lot of people. Mummy, I'm daddy. Now I'm Explain something to a tea, look after a Leah, make lunch. Because Leah, top of all of that, is. I've, I've been practicing. Oh, yeah. I've been losing my patience. It's been really tiring. You look out the window and nothing much. It's really changed. There's still people driving around here, it still feels quite busy. I, I think a lot of people are in denial still, even though. The restrictions have been wrapped up. Every day I'm, I'm kind of just watching, thinking, how can they let this happen, you know? How can the health minister sit there and, and tell us that the NHS is all right and that the workers are saying that they don't have the equipment, you know? It doesn't make any sense. Everything is so unprecedented. It feels as if they're working out what to do as they go along. There were too many, not even just confirmed cases, but deaths before anybody did anything. The country my family's from, it's tiny, so they've not had any confirmed cases, but they've kind of like shut down at the moment. I don't want any negativity. I don't want to start thinking like, oh, how can they do this? Or what are they doing? It's like a pandemic. You just have to know what to do. Everyone's got to help in their own way, I think. We've got to be grateful for the NHS and all those people out there who are actually helping us get through this. Wednesday, I think I cried approximately like eight times. <laughs> I had really bad chest pains, but I'd had it before last year. The doctor was like, mm, it's like you're anxious. If you can't be stressed out during a global pandemic, when can you be stressed out? Already we have like a crisis of mental health in this country, and what's happened over recent weeks is obviously exacerbating that problem. What's encouraging is you know, the amount of community spirit that we're seeing out of this. I kind of feel that as humans, we've got a really good kind of trait, which is adjusting to situations. I've never been a phone type of person, but I've been video calling my friends for like the entire, like this entire time. It does help a lot. It makes you forget that you're in your house by four. It makes me feel really happy. So then it's like, you, it's like you're kind of with your friends. Okay. Hey friends, how are you? I'm going to say I'm fine, but my chest hurts. My heart feels almost broken. I suppose it's good we're stuck inside because my legs feel heavy. So does my head. I reckon it's fair to say I'm struggling. How are you though? We always talk about time as though it's something we cannot control. And look at us now. I have it and I'm still lost. Have you seen the weather? Wild, how the sun always appears brighter the further you are away from it. You know, I've started pacing again. It's sometimes the only way I know I exist. How are you passing the minute? Four hours, days, me smoking again, not reading beating myself up about the things I have the capacity to change, but usually work helps me break those habits up. But now it feels like I'm the only one that's doing the breaking. <laughs>